My background is engineering physics from an engineering school part of the University of Montreal. And so I was interested in light initially. So I did a master's degree in fiber optics and a PhD in laser spectroscopy and atomic physics. Then uh, I went into the field of fusion, not cold fusion, the hot fusion with uh, tokamak, the big machines. And I work at the biggest machine in, um, in the Canada in those, in those days. And uh, that brought me to UCLA because of my unique skills as a spectroscopist to analyze the light emitted by the plasma produced by the tokamak machines. And it was completely mainstream. <clears throat> Although I always had a spiritual side, interested in yoga, uh, practiced different form of yoga, and uh, even was a member of some philosophical traditions. But in 1992, um, I was in one of those groups, and somebody gave me an article by Dr. Hiroshi Mutoyama, who happens to be the founder of the California Institute for Human Science. His research were very interesting to me. He, was, uh, he had developed a machine to measure the energy flow in the meridians, and he even attempted to do some machines to measure the energy of the chakras. And so I thought that was interesting. And I just wrote to him, there was an address. I never thought that I would even have an answer. In any case, um, I got an answer back from one of his associates uh, telling me that um, he would be at a yoga center in Santa Monica. So that was 1992. So I went and um, attended his lecture. It was very difficult for me to understand uh, his brand of English with Japanese and he also spoke, spoke German. Nevertheless, the subject was so interested or interesting to me that I decided to go to him and. Uh, you know, said, I'm a physicist, this, the instruments that you're developing and the ways to measure the energy are so interesting. Are you doing something, uh, you know, on this side of the ocean? And he said, yes, I'm just starting a school. Um, and he asked me a very precise uh, question that I'll never forget because he looked at me and said, can you teach electricity and magnetism? And I almost laughed in, inwardly because that was the only course that I taught as a grad student. It's like something has been organized here or something. <laughs> so anyway, yes, I started. And so I started to teach uh, in Encinitas. The school was very small. I did not know that the three students I was teaching my class were the only three students of the school at the time. And so I was driving from LA every Saturday to teach the course and that um, lasted almost a year and after that I had um, Dr. Mutiama offered me a position at the California Institute for Human Science so I thought deeply about that because it means leaving mainstream science for frontier science you know some people you know think it's even like voodoo science or whatever but for me eh, it was, you know, it resonated with what my purpose was supposed to be. And so I decided to go. And that's what brought me in this field. And I've been doing research in this field since then. So that's what, 1993. So that's what brought me to this field. And I became director of research at the California Institute for Human Science. And for about 10 years, and then I went to UC Irvine. I'm still uh, staffed there. And, um, and I met lots of interesting people at the California Institute for Human Science. Most of the pioneer in energy field research, you know, Dr. Krippner, Dr. Teller, uh, Valerie Hunt, uh, you name them, Beverly Rubik, all of them, you know. So that was really interesting. The human body is really an energy body and every life form is really uh, the manifestation of energy processes that are going on and not looking it at this time just looking at the structure teach us a very limited thing we need we needed to do that it's like we studied dna we know how the structure of the dna good and they thought that because they know the structure they're very close to make all kind of medicine and we heal everything oh no because it's like taking a computer apart you know 
very sophisticated computer part, but you're not a, a, a scientist even, you're a, a, a specialist in literature. And you have all these part of the computer and you're trying to understand how the computer works. Nobody tells you that it's even a computer. It's not gonna happen. So we need, <laughs> so we need to look at things differently. It's time, it's obvious to me, after looking at in all angles. And so we need uh, an approach that's synthesized, uh, an approach that is synergistic, that is uh, holistic. Uh, we can, otherwise we won't put the pieces together and we won't understand correctly what's happening. So that's where I think Chi has a very important part because it's a platform where uh, scientists like me and others who work in this field in different capacities can come together and work on the same project and um, make some great strides.